this is going to be your skill for an extremity drape. So we're just going to pretend today that the patient is having uh, maybe a knee procedure done. And so you know from when you did your um, prepping that if they're having a knee procedure, we would prep from the ankle to the mid-thigh. And in this case, the patient's going to have a tourniquet on, which they do. And so we're going to drape this left leg. Now, for this competency, you're going to use some sort of under the leg drape. So it could be a three-quarter sheet. It could be a half sheet. Um, you could use a table drape. You could use a gown again upside down if you needed to. And so we're going to use a sheet first, followed uh, by a towel. And the towel, you're going to want to put either in half or in thirds. And you're going to need a towel clip, either a perforating or a non-perforating towel clip. Then you're going to need... <laughs> Sorry? You want me to start over? No. No, we, we can hear you. Then you're going to need an impervious stockinette. And now, um, impervious stockinettes come usually two sizes, an arm and a leg. And so we're saying we're doing this adult female, so we'll use a leg one. But if you were doing maybe an eight-year-old child or something, maybe you'd want to put an arm one on the leg. You know, you can do that. And then um, we're going to wrap the impervious stockinette uh, with either an ace, which is real common, or this is an S mark. And an S mark is sort of like a big rubber band, an ace bandage without the coating on it. One other thing um, some surgeons like is a coband. I think uh, for the purposes of testing and practicing, um, either the S mark or the ACE is going to be easier for you to use. And lastly, we're going to use an extremity drape. And this extremity drape comes with a picture of a person, so you can see the head and the arms and the legs. And if I open it up, you'll see that there will be arrows. Now, to do this draping, it's going to take a couple of sterile people, um, sometimes even three. Sometimes you'll see your surgeon, your physician assistant, and you, the surge tech, all doing this drape together. Plus, you will have the RN that has prepped the legs. So once again, we put the drape in the sequence the way we would have to have it for the patient. So the last thing on is the first thing you put on your table, so your extremity drape. And really, all this is is like a laparotomy drape. Only the fenestration or the hole is in a different spot on it. And the drape covers the entire patient. So we have our extremity patient, or extremity patient, our extremity drape. We're going to have our stockinette, and in this scenario we'll use our ace. We're going to have our towel with our perforating or non-perforating towel clip, and our drape, half sheet, three-quarter sheet, whatever. Okay, so in this scenario, I'm going to have, um, I guess, Randy, since you're sitting there, um, I'm going to have you, and we'll pretend that I'm not sterile now, but this patient would have their foot probably hanging from a candy cane stirrup, and Randy would have prepped the knee and all the way down from the ankle to here. So we'll pretend you took the candy cane stirrup off, and you're going to hold the leg as an unsterile person, a circulator now, just like this. Now, the first thing we're going to put on is a sheet. And so there's a couple ways we can do this. If I have my assistant here, uh, which will be Wetner, Wetner can come to that side of the table without touching the table, grab this drape. Don't, let's do it at the foot of the bed here now. Open it up. Okay, now we're going to open it like this. Protect your hand and we can slide it now. Use your uh, right hand and kind of pull your body back so you let us exactly get this in. Don't drop your hands, just drop that, okay? One way of putting the sheet on. You could have opened up this sheet, protected your hands, and done it yourself without somebody helping you. That would have been another way to do it. Another way to do it is Remember how table drapes come, where they come all fan folded and then they come folded up? This is sort of quick and dirty, like this. Mm -hmm. You could have set that down, folded that out, 
like this, I should say. Hold this towards you and then up. So there's um, a few ways that you could put this sheet on. The easiest is if you have somebody there to help you. Okay, next, remember I said that we're going to put a towel around the tourniquet. The tourniquet is unsterile. We're going to put a sterile towel around to sort of protect it. Now, you do not need to even put a sheet on here, but you're going to see why it is real handy. Number one, it's handy. You can use it as a table now. I could bring all the rest of my drapes up and use this as a sterile table. I could choose to leave them back here or I could bring it up. Another thing it does is when you're putting the towel around the tourniquet, it sort of adds protection so that you don't contaminate. So I'm going to come around Randy here, and, I, and she's going to shift like she did. Now I'm going to be careful not to contaminate. I'm going to reach around. I'm going to come around with this towel, and I'm going to wrap it around the tourniquet. Don't touch the tourniquet. It's not sterile. So you can crisscross this, and then you can clip it. Now you can see why this sheet is very handy. If this sheet wasn't on there, this is all unsterile, and I run the risk of bumping this. So it's just sort of added protection. So it's nice to have, and you can lift up a little higher so I can get this around the tourniquet. And we'll clip it. And you could have used a perforating or a non-perforating towel clip. It didn't matter. I'm going to back up. And now this is when you need some help. I'm going to take next my ACE, could have been an S mark, could have been a Coban, and my perforating, or my impervious stockinette. And I'm going to place this on the patient's foot. So now what I need Wetner to do, and we'll pretend that Wetner is either my assistant or the surgeon, put your hands inside to protect your gloved hands. Grab the foot now, Wetner, right up here. Now, Randy can get away from here. Now, some of these impervious stockinettes have strings, and when you pull them, it rolls. If it doesn't, you have to be very careful to roll this, and this impervious stockinette has to end up above where you prepped. All right? Can't be above the incision, but above where you prep. Now, we're going to take our ACE or our S mark, and what we're doing now is we're going to do what's called exsanguating. Uh, the limb. So we're going to kind of squeeze the blood down here up to towards the tourniquet and so when we inflate the tourniquet then we should have uh, somewhat of a bloodless uh, surgery. So we're going to wrap this around and you're going to just kind of have to exchange hands and we would do it real tight because we're trying to extenuate the blood. Grab the toes now again, Wetner. And this just gets wrapped right around this impervious stockinette. Okay. And you don't have to do it completely. You just tuck it in there like that. Beautiful. Now, we're going to grab our drape. And if you have three people, this is wonderful. If you have two, it makes it a little more difficult. Uh, but we'll show you. So we're going to put it on the patient so that the head is towards the patient's head. I'm going to split the drape in half, and I have a table to put it on now. So Wetner's going to grab this with this hand. I'm going to grab this, and I want to find the hole in the drape. And I need to put the foot through. So you can see, and I'll have Sylvie come over here. We'll pretend Sylvie's got a gown and glove on on my right. So another person would be wonderful. You can do it with two. You hang on to that, and you pull this out a little bit. Now, we have to stretch this blue hole up over to above where our incision is. Here. Okay, let that drop. Don't drop your hands. Let that drop. Okay, now Wetner and I can grab above the bed. Remember we use, no, remember how we do this? Okay, protect your hand to the foot. Now we're going to do the same thing here. To the head. And here's our draped extremity. This would really be no different for an arm. If you were doing an arm, we have what we call an arm table. And it's about the width of the foot of the bed or about the width of maybe two arm boards together. So if we had done an arm, your arm would be holding the arm. 
We would have put a sheet underneath. We would have wrapped the tourniquet in a towel. And we would have um, put a stock in it over the hand with an ACE or an S mark. And then we would have put a fenestrated drape over the arm. So go ahead and practice arms. If somebody wants to get up on the bed, put their hand out, you can practice that. Use two arm boards, do a leg. If you want to do it on the mannequin, you can. If somebody wants to get up, and we can drape their leg. And so um, this drape is called an extremity drape. There is also a drape that looks almost identical to this. It's called an arthroscopy drape. But what that has is the same blue rubber, but here it's got a plastic bag. And the bag, and I'll show you one, has a little tip and you hook up the suction tubing to it. It's like a triangle bag because we use a lot of fluid to flush the knee with. And so the drape process isn't any different. The drape itself has that clear bag that you attach suction tubing to, and then your RN can attach it to a suction canister or to a kick bucket gravity, and the fluid hopefully will go on that and not in your shoes and your socks. And so um, the arthroscopy procedure draping is the same, except for you would use an arthroscopy drape instead of a extremity drape. So do you have any questions with this? Now I'm gonna suggest uh, for practice purposes, if you want to use this drape and refold it, have at it. But um, the green laparotomy drape that we use for the laparotomy, the cloth one, that's got a much bigger hole and it's the same concept. So you might want to just fold that up like you did for the abdominal draping and use that. This one is much more difficult to try to fold up. And here's where you could put your light cord through. Um, any cautery, uh, your, your shaver cord, whatever. Some surgeons like to use this, some don't.